Today's episode is a lot of fun. We are redoing the first two rounds of the fantasy football draft after five weeks of the season are in the books. See who we pick, who we like rest of season. We're talking news, Thursday Night Football. It's a great show. Enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hi, this is Troy Polamalu, and you're listening to Fantasy Footballer's Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, October 12th. Jason Moore, Mike the Fantasy, Hitman Ride, Andy Holloway. Backwards hat, Jason Moore. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be mean-spirited today. We got our our little mock draft, mock I'm- redraft, and Jason in a backwards hat. I, I, will not, I will not lie to you. It frightens me a little bit. You should be intimidated. I have no idea what you're going to do. I'm going to pick the best players, regardless of where you think they should be picked. Just like his idol, Bart Simpson, would do. Oh, hey. Bart Simpson reference, with huh? With the backwards cap. Yeah, I just feel like Jason could have a skateboard with him. That's you know all. Eat my shorts. Huh? All right. How about that? Well, there you go. <laughs> I thought you were a big Simpsons guy, Mike. Oh, big time. Well, that's why the, the backwards hat was not did not compute. Okay. I mean, part of Bart Simpson, the hair is an iconic part of the and character. Jason can't pull that part off? Well, not the, not the Simpsons hair. Or... We are we are hunting. We're hunting for some uh, Halloween ideas, are we not? We are because we normally Bart dress Simpson up. Is on the table. You could be Homer. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. You got to sh- no, nope. oh, no. He don't have he to shave. He does have a beard. Homer yeah, that, doesn't have a yes, beard. Yes, that thing is a beard. What? Yeah, no, it's not. Homer doesn't have a beard. I feel like Mike would know. I feel like that's just dumb because I, does, I, I, that's I, not a beard. I've always thought that was a beard. It's just the color of his. Here's the problem. Face that's different than the color of his skin. Yeah. <laughs> Jason's unwilling to Jason's unwilling to shave. Mike is unwilling to shave, and I understand yeah. that you your loyalty to this show only goes so far. But that does limit your options. Like Mike could just Mike would love to go as Ryan Fitzpatrick every year. Why you gotta spoil the uh yeah. the big surprise. But if you have an idea that makes sense, please send it to us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Tag us. We'd love to know some ideas. Bearded ideas only. I think that the Homer Simpson, after looking at him, maybe it's like a five o'clock. Yeah, shadow. yeah. That's yes. He doesn't have a big beard, but okay. Okay. I mean, you could you could go for it. No, thank you. <laughs> All right. I'll uh, be I'll be March. <laughs> okay. With a beard. <laughs> with a beard. Yes. <laughs> Ride or die. Some news to talk about the Thursday night preview, but the main event today is going to be a fantasy draft redo. The first two rounds, we'll be drafting them all over again, which is another way of saying we're going to draft kind of a rest of season rankings for these players. And um, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be pretty informative. You can look and see who you think is at the top of the list. And and some of the players in the order might surprise you. And when you're looking for trades going forward in your leagues and you're, you're saying, well, who do I value at this point for the rest of the season more than others, you could take this list and uh, try to trade up. The current Megalobowl leader right now is uh, still, oh, still the Shark from Jaws 3D, 10-0. Wow. 877 points. I am 9-1, and one and I do not have anywhere near. I, gotta, I, I have to have like a 200-point gap here. That yeah, is, that's, uh, that's a lot of points. That's got to be a Josh Allen amount of points on impressive. that roster. Uh, jointhefoot.com is our fantasy football community. You get a bonus weekly show, a bunch of premium perks. We just added a waiver wire rankings page to the website. I've seen a lot of feedback on Twitter from that, uh, especially from those. Look, we're the whole purpose of this show is to be your shortcut to the amount of research and analysis and insights that help you in your league. So you don't have to do all of that. And so I've seen from a lot of people that are like, look, I, I don't have time to labor over the waiver wire rankings all of the time. And this page, it's a one-stop shop for, you know, the kind of bids I should put in or the waiver wire pickups I should do. 
So you can check that out at thefantasyfootballers.com, and uh, it's in the ranking section. Okay, update. I checked. I have 597 points on the season. My team's been great. This dude has 280 more points in five weeks. That's <laughs> I wild. Gotta, I gotta look yeah, we need to roster. figure that roster out. Uh, let's do some ride or die, though. Ride or Die, presented by Chevrolet. Well, last week, I guess we were all one for three. We all tied, but we got the spirit of Tyler Lockett right. We did not get six-plus receptions, but he did dominate. Yeah, two touchdowns, right? Yes, sir. How many catches did he have? Not six-plus. Not six-plus. All right. I'll tell you what I'm confused about here is uh, on the Terry McLaurin, where Andy and I both had die, only Andy got a check mark. Okay, so Mike was two for three last week is what we're saying. Huh. <laughs> what's going on back there, producers? Yeah, what's the story? Mm. Glad he caught that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm glad I caught that. All, yeah. three, all three deucers wearing the same fantasy footballers live tour shirt from 2019. <laughs> Do you guys kind of have like a... <laughs> Kyle like has covered Kyle his... literally his zipped <laughs> up his hoodie. Ooh. This is what we were talking about this earlier. Is this part of the text chain this morning? Accidentally wore Reveal the yourself. same shirt. But then you call it out and we find out that Kyle has zipped up to hide his shame. That I is love it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, all right. Brooksy. We've got week six ride or die predictions right here, right now. What do we got? All right. First one, Ramondre Stevenson at Cleveland. Oh, Ramondre. Will he be a top 10 running back e in half PPR? That is a very <sighs> high bar to clear. I will hop in and ride first. Ooh. I, I do think Ramondre Stevenson is a top 10 running back. The matchup against Cleveland, we just saw what – uh, the I mean, the Chargers ran all over them, not just Eckler with his 170-plus yards. Joshua Kelly did great, and Ramondre Stevenson in this matchup, I think, will uh, be a special uh, fantasy asset this year. Uh, I, I, I'll just spoil tomorrow's show for one player. I went in so early to <laughs> put Ramondre Stevenson as my start of the week, and Nicely he was already done. in there for Andy. Oh, Wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm jumping into I'm riding shotgun with Jaden on, on this one. I'm gonna ride Cleveland ranked thirtieth against fantasy running backs. And like who else is gonna play for this team at the running back position? Yeah, I think the narrative against to make the argument before I ride with you because he's my start of the week. <laughs> you you could say, look, going on the road in offense that you don't know what the quarterback situation is gonna be. Um, the defense knows what's coming, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't seem to matter if they know what's coming because it's just working against Cleveland. So, All right, Andy, are you going to ride a top six fantasy finish this it's week? Just, it's just not It's not you playing chicken? this game the right way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think I'd ride top six, no. He's, he's currently in my top five. Oh, so are you going to ride with the top six? If are you going to ride into the top six? He's my running back nine, so no, obviously okay. not. Uh, Melvin Gordon is our next one, Brooksy. What's the line for Melvin? All right, Melvin Gordon at the Chargers. Will he have 12 fantasy points? Yeah, mm. I'm going to ride that. Mm. Yeah, I think Melvin will get the work. He can get to 12. Man, Melvin. The standards for Melvin have changed over the years, but certainly. he can get to 12. But this is, I mean, well, oh, is this really the Chargers? So we got a revenge game. You know, not that he hasn't had that before, but the the interesting thing will be Latavius Murray we have we we have no idea what that workload is going to be Benjamin Albright was asked about the timeshare between the three and he implied you know like we are likely to see a hot hand approach but Latavius Murray will be given a chance to see if he in fact has the hot hand on that matchup so 12 points it's Man, very, very doable, especially if you just fall into the end zone one time. But I'm going to say I'm going to go, go die. Okay. Die. Yeah, this is a perfect line uh, th because you need a touchdown, right? Like he, Melvin Gordon was very, very good last week. Um, got all of the workload. Had 11.8 fantasy points and half PPR scoring. Did not hit this bar. Why? He didn't get a touchdown. Now, the Chargers are a pretty good bet to give up a touchdown on the ground. So if I'm saying... Do I believe that he gets that line? I'm. This is tough. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to say he does not <laughs> get into 
the end zone this week. Okay. And uh, Brooksy, our final one. We built this city. Oh, I don't want to talk about it. All right, but we have to, Mike. Uh, Pity City, Michael Pittman versus the Jaguars. Will he be a top 18 wide receiver? He's been wide receiver 36 or worse the past three weeks. Ugh. Seems like a seems like a really harsh line then to give him a top 18. Oh, uh, boy. Uh, I'm really caught in a difficult place here. I've been kind of on this show the most um, anti-Pittman of the three of us over the years. So... It's tough not to kind of, uh, I guess, pile on the last three weeks. I think he's going to score against Jacksonville. I'm going to, I'm going to ride. Ooh. Yeah, I think this is a bounce back week for Michael Pittman. I do. I have a, I have a hard time. It's, so this is where uh, sometimes rankings and um, where you really anticipate someone finishing don't line up because I couldn't imagine ranking Pittman behind the top eighteen as far as who I would start based on his opportunity and the matchup. Uh, but, man, top 18 means you're going to have to come through on that. Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill, a little banged up. Maybe they fall out. I'm going to ride. <laughs> I'm going to ride. I'm going to hold my breath and ride right into Pity City. That is like, we built this city. That like, explains it very well, Jay. Like, how do you not rank the, the talent of Michael Pittman, what he can do? He should easily be ranked as a top 20 wide receiver. Uh, but I've heard some people talking about it and like looking at this tweet from friend of the show, Rich Rebar, Michael Pittman's longest target is 17 yards down the field. They yeah. are yeah, not, they're not throwing the ball down the field at well, all. They are. That's the point is Michael to who Pitt, like like people who have, have uh, more uh, downfield targets than Michael Pittman include Jelani Woods. Like the other players on this team are seeing some targets down the, the field. I totally get it that uh it doesn't feel like it because they're not being an aggressive team overall. They have a really, really low deep ball rate. But I'm saying so that the size of the pie for the deep ball rate, it's going to other players for some bizarre reason. You know, you have like Alec Pierce and Doolin, which Doolin is, is on the IR now. But it's like these guys have more deep targets on the year than Michael Pittman. What what the heck is going on? Well, no, it makes sense to me. It why, really does. Why is that? Because Pierce is a burner. Pierce is going to get more downfield targets, I think, than Pittman ever will. And Doolin has always just been a deep threat as well. I think Pittman's relied upon more for the first downs, the third down plays. The He's the possession. You know, Hopkins, if you target Hopkins down the field, he's going to do well. Right. Larry Fitzgerald, over the back half of his career, they just stopped targeting him downfield, not because he couldn't do it, but because he needed him for other stuff. You know, Hilton in years past was the downfield threat. I. But this just just this is a but, part of the problem that we're not getting any. Well, That's, I mean, he didn't play in week two, so really, Michael Pittman has had one top thirty six finish. Yes. That's a depressing first five weeks. Yes, it's been a really bad start for Michael Pittman after the explosive week one. Uh, gosh. Yeah. What I, did Jason? You wrote. Are we all I, riding? I, uh, are we? Let's just, like uniting just to. For the, the confidence of Michael Pittman, hopefully he hears this and yeah, does or, something or we about make it, it. Or we make it top 15 and I go ahead and die. <laughs> yeah, top 15 I'd be out too. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, <laughs> Jason, all right, I'm so out. we'll all ride with Michael <laughs> Pittman this week. That was ride Come on, or, baby. That was Ride or Die presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA Insurance. All right, the Dolphins are optimistic Tyreek Hill will play this week. So are fantasy football players. <laughs> However, he, he'll be playing with Skylar Thompson because Tua is not going to play. Skylar Bridgewater's Thompson. in the concussion protocol, and so the expectation right now is Sky Thompson is going to start against Minnesota. I may have seen this news early this morning and desperately hoped I could sign the, my, uh, the Minnesota defense, Ooh, but they're rostered in our league of record. Gotcha. Devontae Adams has been cited for misdemeanor assault. Um, well, there you go. The league is looking into it. I mean, the Raiders are he, on by. He, he was both cited with a C and also cited by the entire world uh, Ooh, committing nice. this crime. Good play on words there. Uh, the, the 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 hard part for this is it was a completely unprovoked push. I, it's just a push. I get it if you want to go with that. But 
this photographer is they did their job like they're just they're doing what they're supposed to do and then a professional athlete who's mad about the loss shoved them to the ground like yeah, i mean uh, i'll put I'll, I'll put 10 to 15 percent on that photographer you know you go back and watch that video he he has a ton of equipment and he jumped directly in front of Devontae walking off the field. There is an angle but that from happens. He doesn't all deserve to be time. pushed. I'm not saying he does, but Yeah, there was an angle from behind Devontae Adams where you saw like he He couldn't really have walked did, anywhere. Really did like come out of nowhere. Did not need to push the guy, but it was it was a little less harsh when I saw that angle. That being said, I'm saying that the, the he's going to he's going to face a fine, I think. I don't I don't know if he's going to miss a game for this. That I, I if I'm on, if I'm in the NFL uh, it's a one game for me. Okay, you, well, you were right last time on the on the suspension prediction. It might happen before the end of the show, like it did last time. It's just about like you have to make like Devonte Adams is an an elite player that oh you have to make an example out of him that sucks that like you have to make sure that players know you can't shove a person on the sideline who's doing their job because you're throwing a temper. You might be right. That you lost. You now, might the, be right. The thing that would really stink about that is if they do come down with a one game suspension, that means you don't have Devonte Adams for the next oh, two weeks, Oh man, because he's on bye this week. That's brutal. So that would, oh man, that would suck. Yeah. Mike McCarthy preparing for a Cooper rush to start against the Eagles. Big divisional matchup between uh, these teams. Dak still trying to get back. Kyle Pitts expected to practice on Wednesday. Comments from Arthur Smith last week said he was As likely going to be chuckles. a one-week uh, absence. I chuckle because comments from Mike, the fantasy hitman, right, were uh, very <laughs> ecstatic. As Mike and Andy play each other this week in the League of Record, Andy's tight end uh, currently injured is Kyle Pitts, and Mike was excited that he might be able to play against Kyle Pitts this week. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, but... Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, Kyle's going to have – Kyle Pitts is going to have a couple weeks. Yes. And I just hope one of them is this week against Mike. Uh, let's talk about this. Mike Tomlin came out and said, we've been playing Jalen War Warren more, and we will continue to do so. Najee is the RB29 in a half PPR. Their matchups are gross coming up. Tampa, Miami, Philadelphia, the last two on the road. You know, I think that Jalen Warren has some juice, right? Like, we've seen sure. – We've seen players behind Najee, <clears throat> Benny Snow, and they don't belong on a football field. And Jalen Warren at least belongs on a football field. I still think Najee's dealing with injury. Yes, um, he is. And you want to know how I know he is? Because Jalen Warren legit looks better than Najee Harris. Like, when they, he is being more efficient. He's a better runner. When he's on the field other than Najee, is more productive and he is not the better player than Najee Harris the only thing that can explain it is that Najee is playing through that foot injury when he was writhing in pain and when he you know got carted off uh, early uh I think before the season it was in training camp yeah I mean there he is not at a hundred percent full strength Jalen Warren does look better so I don't doubt if they get him more and more involved um Najee was our, one of our begrudging bust picks before the year and it's not looking fantastic for his outlook going forward if they're trying to get him healthy and they take a few more carries, a few more touches away from him because the touches have already come away from him in the passing game. It's going to be really difficult to start him as a stud. Is there any world where you're trying to just trade low for Najee and let him sit on your bench and hopefully I over the second half – Najee Harris is healthier in return. If someone's form. super out on him, I don't mind that. That being, you know, that being considered, I think there's a chance they shut him down for a couple games. Maybe that's the solution for getting him healthy. And that's where Jalen Warren really, he should have been a bigger topic yesterday on the waiver show. We missed that. But he could have a couple of weeks alone. Yeah, I mean, over the next, you know, six weeks, you've got Tampa Bay, Philly, the Saints and the Bengals with a bye in that. Sorry, mix. our waivers ran. Jason. Oh, th t uh, this is Taysom talk. Is this I, Taysom talk? It is. What do you think? T don't look at. Don't look. Uh, don't look. Okay. Don't look. I'm not looking. Taysom Hill went for what in our oh. league of records? Well, I I would have said ten, but be, based on the inflection of your voice, twenty up. No. <laughs> oh my gosh, thirty up. <gasps> what? Forty. <40? laughs> Oh, to Andy in the to play against Mike? All for the yes. theater, baby. Yes. yes. By the way, this my bid has to happen. My bid was perfect. 
Did someone go 36? 35 was the highest bid other than me. I went 37. Okay. Bids below that, 35, 23, 11, 10, 8, 6, 5. We'll, I was the 5. <laughs> we'll go ahead and hide the fact that, well, first of all, you had uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 bids in this league. So 8 of 12 teams bid on Taysom oh, Hill. One, I Certainly, I get the, that. The, uh, the tight end landscape is, is, if you don't have the main guys, l let me look at this. Who didn't bid on him? Uh, the tight, uh, Mike, who's your tight end? Tyler Higby. Okay. Um, also not bidding. The Kelsey and Andrews managers. Not true. Oh, you bid? I did bid. Okay. And $6. I'm the Andrews manager. You just yeah, wanted but, in on that? Well, he would flex I, him. I'd flex, He'd him, flex him, right him for now. sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. I, it's not something you want to so, say out loud. I, my bid might have been, uh, it was 27 last night. Then I started thinking about my opponent. Oh, yeah. And I started realizing, yes. like, like, who would I rather – I mean, there's no one I'd rather play Taysom Hill against than Mike. Yes, this must happen. Now, I did have Taysom Hill before this past week, and so it's a depressing 37 to spend. I, but this I, is going to be a blast. Now, Mike, if I may uh, be the interviewer here. Sure. Yes. Mike, are you scared? Don't ask me this question. I know. Are you scared of the potential that Taysom Hill can hurt you, or – are you excited because you believe that he is mostly a player that uh, will not score well for fantasy and you are thrilled that he is being played against you? In the words of Jesse Spano, I am so excited. I'm so excited. I am so scared. Okay. Well, let me... Right. Because both of those things are 100% true. I believe in my heart and everything within me that the most logical <laughs> statistical finish for Taysom Hill is four to five carries and 15 to 20 rushing yards. That's the most logical outcome. But he did what he did last week. Like So that is now in the one percentile of what he can actually do. Okay. The tight end three on the year. Final, yes. final question. And you cannot play the game, the gamesmanship, okay. the, I, you know, oh, my opponent, I'll tell him one thing so he thinks another. Gen Andy, earmuffs. Um, <laughs> you're covering your headphones uh mike who yeah would you yep who would i rather play who would against? you rather play against kyle, kyle pitts. pitts you would so you are more afraid of Taysom hill than kyle pitts kyle pitts is playing san francisco this week he's coming off an injury i would yeah, rather, who do you think's in my lineup right now i well, would rather play you didn't against spend 37 to not play that's Taysom right. Hill. yes that's right Taysom hill v mike yes this is great Woo! this is great here we go. <laughs> hey, uh, Fantasy football is so fun. Hey, hey uh, Jameis, I hope you're feeling okay, buddy. Oh, Get no. Get back in there, brother. Oh, I no. I need you. Well, look, they got to build this team around Taysom at this point. He's such a stud. Yeah, they, those 25% of the snaps. Tyson Williams, Corey Clement signed by the Cardinals practice squad because James Conner uncertain for this week. Daryl Williams already ruled out. I think Eno's a great start. Nathaniel Hackett. Head coach of the Broncos said Greg Dulcich will return to practice. He's a rookie tight end. This is good news for the Broncos. I'm not sure it's actionable for fantasy players. Yeah, it's such long odds that Dulcich will make an impact. But they just use too many tight ends. But they, but none of the tight ends that they use are special. They're not. But I don't know if Dulcich can be special yet. But yeah, but that's that's the unknown of like it's. Probably not going to happen, but there is a chance that Dulcich is special. He was, I mean, him and uh, Trey McBride were like the cream of the crop yes. this year. Yeah, and there was good reports preseason before the injury. Yeah, and elite hair. It's certainly a factor. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then The Athletic is reporting that the Panthers are not actively trying to trade Christian McCaffrey. There was a single report that Phew. I had read about interest from the Bills. Yeah, that went around like a wildfire Because it's fun to think about. And it was like, I got Christian McCaffrey on my team, and the office was very divided. If Christian McCaffrey goes to the Bills, is that actually good, or is it bad? And Yeah, we were we were divided. It was not, for me, I was you, fully on the side yeah. of, I, I think it is a very easy call that it is great for Christian McCaffrey. And I totally understand. That he's not as necessary. He's probably not going to get as many uh, touches. But he is great. Yeah. Put him on the Bills, where Devin Singletary at the end of last year when he got all the work was a top five running back, and then make that Christian McCaffrey, he would dominate for the Bills. I'm confident in that, but the we were divided. It wasn't uh it wasn't a unanimous thought process, and so that's why you have three different voices on this show. 
All right. Uh, anything else, Brooksy? No, sir. All right. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. All right. We uh, maybe I'll try to flip taste some hill first. <laughs> no, I'll try to get myself a little draft pick. You got it. You got to play him. <laughs> you yeah, you the are the, show. The, the 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 example that you said. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm so scared. I mean, that's that's dead on. Taysom Hill is an enigma. He doesn't yes. make sense. I mean, he's a tight end who doesn't get targets. He's a, not really a tight end. Yeah, he's, he like I get you have to us you have to assign a position. You to have to him. give him something. But he, I mean, at, does he play more tight end? I don't know what his actual snaps break down to. What does he do the most? Yeah, I, I wish that he could just be played everywhere. Like a like he's <laughs> he's got the wild card he's, icon he's from to, Uno. No, he's just flex. He just yeah, you could be quarterback, yep. running back, wide receiver, or tight end. Why not? Yeah, that's what he does he is. all of those things. I guess on Yahoo he's still listed as a quarterback. Okay, correct. That would be not a place to play him. <laughs> no, he's both quarterback and tight end. Right, right. But I wouldn't want to. I don't think I'm. Last week wasn't indicative of, like, play him at second quarterback or something. Uh, let's mock draft. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. So we're going to do a 2022 Fantasy Draft redo, the first 24 picks. We're going to go uh, – we'll just rotate through these picks. And before we begin, Jason, I guess you have the first pick. Woohoo! Um, before we begin, I will just say like, this is a very interesting like exercise in general, because it's a balance between reaction and overreaction. In my opinion, it's a long season. We're five weeks in and players that haven't performed doesn't mean that you wouldn't want them or draft them, uh, exceptionally high for the, for the end of the season. At the same time, you're reacting to realities that are now cemented. And I think that that will define the first pick in this draft. So, Jason. It will. it will. The first pick is a reality that has been cemented, which is that Saquon Barkley is back to full strength. He is back to the physical dominant running back that can handle a, a full capacity workload, a great pass catcher, can break off long plays. We haven't seen it in a couple of years because of injury. We hoped it was because of injury and not because he had lost it. Players lose it at some point. He's still young. He hasn't lost it. He has no competition for touches with the 4-1 and one Giants. Saquon Barkley would be the number one pick if I was drafting over today. And to me, it's not even just that he's back. It's the opportunity count. It's the fact that he's central to the offense. Like, he's been good before physically and not used the right way. And now he's taking wildcat snaps and all of that. 31 carries two weeks ago, I believe. Yeah, he Mike, you are, you are on the clock. Saquon went 101. In our fantasy draft redo, where are you going? It, there's a couple guys that I would strongly consider here. And we're, we're viewing this through the half PPR sure. lens, yeah, by yeah. the way. Um, and it's like normally you're like, okay, well, I want the high end running back. And I'm in agreement that Saquon would be my first pick, but it's like the running back, too. I don't know. That's a big question. I do not know where to go. And so, uh, honestly, if I had to move forward, I would, just, I would go Cooper Cup. He's, yeah. he's locked in. The Matthew Stafford doesn't give a crap about anybody else on this team. Sometimes Higby, when he's real scared, he'll throw it to him. Yes. But other than that, when he has some confidence in a play, it's going to Cooper Cup. And Cooper Cup is the, and it's what's crazy is the other team knows. The other team knows that his Cooper Cup is going to be the one getting the ball, and yet he still has success. It's not translating to overall Rams success, but Cooper Cup still putting up just Un, you know, still putting ridiculous up statistics. The most points. Yes. Just the most. I mean, Saquon Barkley has been unbelievable. I just took him number one. He has not scored as much as Cooper Cup in half PPR. Uh, Cooper if you're Cup in full is, PPR. It's Cooper even Cup more. is on pace for 166 receptions on 217 targets for 1,800 yards and 14 touchdowns. <laughs> nice. So, um, yeah, no, that's that's the right pick, Mike. And uh, I'm with you. And I'm going to go with Justin Jefferson with the third overall pick. Ooh, the okay. same Ooh. same logic applying here. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, it's difficult right now. You have a quarterback that's injured. You have a new head coach. 
Uh, you have yeah. misuse uh, already as a precedent, and you did not lose. They didn't lose Ben McAdoo, did they? No, he's still there. Yeah, they should have. Mm. <laughs> And yeah. that might have changed things. But no, Justin Jefferson is more of a sure thing than uh, even Christian McCaffrey is right now moving into the back uh, half of this year. And uh, his pace, not quite Cooper Cup level, but it ain't, it's not very far off. No. Well, you, 187 you, target pace, 136 receptions, 1,900 yards, and seven touchdowns. You still had those couple down games, but it seems like the Vikings figured it out. Yeah, I mean, going forward now and. You, Chris McCaffrey is is in consideration. Derrick Henry, um, Stephon Diggs. Uh, you know we're talking Cooper Cup and Justin Jefferson. Diggs should be right there with him. But at this point, with the fourth pick, I am going to take Christian McCaffrey. Okay. I, I think he is quarterback proof enough. Uh, we haven't seen him fully dominate, and yet he's been great. So I will continue to uh, have Christian McCaffrey up uh, in my top five. Mike, you have the fifth pick here. Barkley, and, Cup, Jefferson, McCaffrey so far. And here we are in a world where I didn't think we would ever be because I would take Josh Allen, the quarterback, which sounds like counterintuitive to everything that I have believed about fantasy football for the last decade. Wow. The supply and the demand of the quarterback position, they are easily replaceable. However, this year, they are not. Josh Allen has 150 total points in a four point touchdown scoring format and then like down at five you're like well okay well five the fifth overall quarterback certainly I'm competing against the number one quarterback because that's how it always has been it's not been a huge gap of points but at five is Kyler Murray with just over a hundred points a 50 point gap and there's there's no reason for me to doubt what Josh Allen is doing is going to slow down at all the guy is an absolute machine if he's having a bad day throwing the ball he just runs for 75 yards like he is he has so bust proof at this point to me that I would take him fifth overall in a redraft the quarterback in a one quarterback league yeah the quarterback position has been one where we've always touted late round drafting because it is replaceable you can even replace it off the waiver wire yeah and if you start at the quarterback five, which is right now is Kyler Murray, is a hundred percent. It is replaceable. The gap between five and twelve and those guys is not that big a deal. But if you don't have one of the top three or four quarterbacks, because Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, they yep. run the ball so much and they're good at throwing the ball. So it's like you you can't replace those guys. And and you could throw uh, Mahomes in there too. All right. So Mike went with Josh Allen. That puts me back on the clock. And uh, my selection here, no disrespect to the other running backs involved, but it's Derrick Henry. When I take Derrick Henry, again, it's it's similar logic to the Saquon Barkley situation. They also are involving him in the passing game. He's everything they have. Uh, that's very much the way it is with the Giants and Saquon Barkley. He's Barkley's everything they have on offense. Henry's everything that the Titans have on offense. Uh, a coaching staff, a coaching staff, I trust more than the Giants. I still think Henry is in line to be a fantasy MVP. I, I, it would have been my pick had I been on the clock. I think Henry will touch the ball 25 times every game the rest of the way. And if you watch, maybe his offensive line is worse. Maybe his offense is worse. But he's not. He takes, yeah, he's the he same. takes half the team to take him down yep. every single play. It's unbelievable. And as it gets colder, what, what do we get more of, Jay? More snow in Vermont. <laughs> Watch out, people. Um, it, this is pretty easy to me because I was, when I was thinking like about. Derek Henry is one of the biggest like climate change advocate situations. <laughs> he doesn't want to get warm up there. Um, yeah, so uh, I was between, uh, at the last pick, it would have been Derek Henry or Stephon Diggs. I am back up, so I will take Stephon Diggs. I think that there is a Fair. massive break after Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, and Diggs. Those three are set yeah. apart at wide receiver. Yeah, I agree, because looking at the wide receivers now, it's like, man, I know Devonta Adams, is he's fourth, but... It's, it doesn't feel the same. Jamar and, no. Chase was drafted ahead of yeah. Diggs, but... And, and Adams had the monster game, but it was just, it was like three catches or so. He's... He's off next week, might be suspended for a game. Might be taking another week off. Yeah, I mean, like, that should factor in if you're when you're doing your rest of season rankings. You know what would have been cool? Was yeah. if the photographer had snapped a picture mid-shove. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'd be uh, good evidence for <laughs> uh, your honor. <laughs> the evidence, this view of the sky. Yeah, and uh, so to speak to what Mike's saying here, the players that, um, we, that we're, we're factoring in, what is their current status? Are they about to go on by? Have they already... 
had there by no nobody. But um, you've got Jonathan Taylor has not been drafted yet, and right. part of that's because we're not even sure if he's playing this week. And if he does, he's got the the double f injured uh, leg. So yeah, so the, the double injured. <laughs> well, you got the foot and the ankle. Okay. Yes, Mike, you uh, do the right thing here. What take Jonathan Taylor? No. No, I don't think that's the right thing. That's not uh, the right thing. I, I think I know I, it, what... Jonathan Taylor will be my pick after you pick okay. and do the right thing. I, well, okay, I don't know what the right thing to you is, but the right thing to me is is put respect on the man's name from the Cleveland Browns. It is take Nicholas Chubb. Correct. That is correct. Okay, wow. good. We're, we're, in the, we're in agreement then. That, yeah. That Nicholas Chubb, it, he's having – it looks like he's having the one – The time of his yes. life. Oh, he's definitely doing that. But he is having himself a career year – uh, he looks completely unstoppable, even with Kareem Hunt taking away some of those touches inside of the uh, the red zone, inside the five. No, Nicholas is, has been is, ridiculous. He's the entire – oh, ridiculous Nicholas? That's <laughs> yeah. not bad. Uh, I, no, it's just, just a lot. I, I like it. And, just talking. <laughs> and here, like, here is a factor of Nicholas Chubb, the player that I don't want to talk about, but Deshaun Watson is a good quarterback on the NFL field. He will be back, and this team will be better when it is not Jacoby Brissett as the quarterback. Where what's the what was the Watson suspension? Eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, Nicholas Chubb is doing all of this right now, where he is that where the, they a defense barely has to worry about the passing. It's game. it's very Derrick Henry esque. You you have struggled with Chubb versus Henry in fantasy due to the Kareem Hunt factor. They at least, you know, I don't have the data in front of me on those two guys right now. Seems like they're willing to go to Nick Chubb in the red zone more than they have been in previous years, like in the <laughs> five in the five zone. Sure. So uh, I, there are two running backs I would take over Chubb here, and I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to disrespect Chubb at all. He has been awesome. These other two running backs also are awesome, and I just put them all kind of in the in the same tier. Chubb would be at the end of that. I, I, it's worth pointing out. The last four games for the Browns, we knew with the Deshaun Watson suspension that the Browns were gifted one of the easiest schedules to start the year. It was the That's Jet, right. the Jets, the Steelers. Once they lost three of their uh, the sure. main defensive pieces, the Atlanta Falcons and the Chargers, who are currently thirty second against the run. That's the last month, and yes, he has dominated them, and that's great. But I, I still think that there are two running backs on the board well, that are rest of season going to be better than Chubb obviously they have not been as good as Chubb so far yeah my pick is Jonathan Taylor at number nine uh, I couldn't take him over Derrick Henry I don't think that was appropriate but this is like we have to be objective here about the situation we have an entire season where he was the most valuable player in fantasy football and we have had him miss one game and I'm not disqualifying Jonathan Taylor from the rest of the season because he missed one football game this team, I think we talked about it uh, yesterday. The Colts offense will improve. Um, Pittman had missed a game. Alec Pierce hadn't been part of the early part of the season. They're going to make some improvements. Now, are they going to be top 15? I don't know. I don't care. Jonathan Taylor is going to get Henry and Barkley level work for the rest of the season, sure. and it could start this week. Did uh, Sorry, because I'm just – this is back to Nick Chubb. You realize Nick Chubb has seven rushing touchdowns already. Last year, when he was the running back 11 in 14 games, he had eight. Yeah, I mean, t He's touchdowns. running for over six yards. I don't know if carry. that's a point in his favor. Yeah, I was going to say. I, well, now, I, I think it's a point in his favor because what I'm saying of this feels like an out. This like is a special out, year, like a 20 touchdown year. season? Yes, this is a spe special players always have one to two of those years in their career where it's just like, Holy crap, this player was unstoppable this well, year. Well, Jason, uh, you made the point about the schedule, and you said that there were a couple running backs you take over Chubb. Jonathan Taylor's averaging 24.3 opportunities per game. Is Chubb, is Taylor one of the two? Taylor was one of the two, okay. and the second one I'll take here, it's Austin Eckler. Okay. He got off to a, a poor start to the season. I think yeah. that that got people too afraid. Um, his utilization or snaps or whatever you, know, you want to say, it's like, well, he's not getting involved as much as he should. Look, he has been a top three running, uh, top ten running back three weeks of the five, and the other two weeks where he was disappointing. I mean, his usage was great: eighteen opportunities one game, eight receptions the other game. So uh, he looks really like this last game when you watched him, vintage, 
just he looked exactly like he looked last year when he was a top three running back. So someone that catches the ball that much for the Chargers who are still going to get better when they get Keenan Allen back. I uh, I think Austin Eckler is the is the last running back I would take over uh, over Chubb rest of the season. All right. So this one, this question. Yeah, out of curiosity, real oh, quick, just one word, Jason. Taylor or Eckler? Eckler. Mike. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's... It, it's it's injury factored in that I don't know if I would get them this week, and the offensive line and the offense of the Colts looks scary. All right. This this speaking of a scary pick, I think I would do it though, uh, because the future is murky, but the player's been great. I'm going with Tyree Kill of the Miami Dolphins. It's scary because I you have no idea what the quarterback situation is going to be for this team. They it sounds like they're like two is gonna be out again. Yeah, they there was a note that they're like even per, I mean we talked, you know, about they're preparing for Skyler. Or that's that's the kid's name, right? Yeah. And like so they're they're being even extra careful with Teddy Bridgewater. Uh but it is a long season. I do believe that Tua will be back and Tyreek Hill looks just as electric and unstoppable as he always has. Yeah, I mean, I did, think about the the zero sum game that the Dolphins are playing with to his health. If they put him out there too early, and he gets concussed one more time, his season's over. It's over. Right. You're not seeing him again. So I think they they're trying to do the right thing. This is a team that can compete. They want to take as many weeks as possible to minimize that opportunity. My pick here after Tyree Kill is going to be Travis Kelsey. Um, yep, that's fair. Same old, same old <laughs> for Travis Kelsey. You talk about teams that know what's going to happen and it doesn't matter like Cooper Cup I mean you you really should guard Kelsey around the goal line and four touchdowns later I it doesn't seem to matter people know that but they just can't they can't and I've I've said this before in the studio the my the brain of a defense is not one brain it's not like somebody's playing Madden and they can just like a like an they're all one person it's it's you have to communicate. Right. People hand off uh, Kelsey in the zone, and somebody else doesn't pick him up, and it it's just tough. And he's the first read. We've the holes in this offense for Kansas City: MVS, Juju, Hardman, Moore. Mistakes throughout the game, none from Kelsey. He's my pick. Yeah, I I think you're right to look at the tight ends here because if you have one of the two, uh, then you are set apart from the rest of your league. Um, in a dynasty or a keeper league, I think the guy I'm going to take here, Mark Andrews, is untouchable. Just completely and utterly like there is no way I would give up such an advantage if you're talking about in, going into the future too because Kelsey, he's still doing it. Unbelievable, but he's not going to keep doing it for you know uh, next year and the next year and the next year. Uh, Mark Andrews is young. Right now, the, the gap between these two players – um, in total points, you know, it, it isn't that much. And Mark Andrews, I would say rest of season, I would take him over Kelsey rest of season, but it's coin flip. You can have it whichever way you prefer. Um, you know, I don't think Kelsey's always going to get four touchdowns on what did he have? Like 25 yeah, yards, something weird. Um, but those two guys are complete difference makers. And I think there's a gap here. We've, we've taken the elite of the elite running backs. We've taken the elite of the elite wide receivers, We've taken the elite of the elitist quarterback. So, yeah, I would say the two tight ends should go. Yeah, and I, I think there might be another, one more running back that should be really considered here. But, Mike, Ooh. who are you taking with the 14th pick? Just to fill in, Mark Andrews averaging over 95 air yards a game. That's more than A.J. Brown, Jefferson, and Jamar Chase on a per-game basis. It's funny because I, I agree That's with – ridiculous. Yeah. there To me, there are two running backs that should be considered here. Um, but I wonder if we've got the same guys or not. All right. Um – yeah, that's you know, you, you're psyching me out. <laughs> um, because you do you take the player who's actually producing right now, or do you just take the opportunities and the incredible inefficiencies? Uh, I'm yeah, going, yeah. That's that's well, what no, you no, do. no. I I'm just agreeing. Oh, the, I can tell who you're talking about. Yes. So, Eno Benjamin. <laughs> uh, I would take. Gosh, would I really? Put yourself on the clock. I yeah. I'm trying to do that, and I can't select this player. So I'm, uh, I'm I'm going to take Jalen Hurts. I'm going to chicken out, and I'm going to take a player who I really believe in moving forward. And you're like, well, is it Jalen Hurts or Lamar Jackson? Lamar Jackson will when he spikes. Jalen Hurts will not 
hit that because Jalen Hurts doesn't finish. He won't throw enough. Jalen Hurts doesn't have 300 yards uh, like regularly where he's all he's throwing four touchdowns and running a few in, but he is so incredibly safe. You have one poor game from Jalen Hurts where he was the quarterback 15, but other than that, four, three, two, and three. He's been sensational. Yeah, I don't agree with the Hurts pick, but that's – the name of the game. I I think Dalvin Cook is the pick here, and so I'm going to take him. That's I'm I'm I don't know, man. I could that, Dalvin Cook would be one of those two that yeah, and he would be the top one. He's the top on my list. I just well. couldn't take Jalen Hurts over Dalvin Cook. Uh, I Cook has redeemed himself in the past couple of weeks for me. Um, the way this offense has functioned, the fact that they have trusted him, uh, the the fact he's gotten in the end zone. So I will go with Dalvin here, and I have a player I hope falls to me with my, my next pick. My concern with Dalvin is. He was great last week against the Chicago Bears. He was, I mean, he had a ton of volume but was inefficient against the Saints, who are a much better defense. Against Detroit, he was great. Against Philadelphia, I mean, he... Which game did he get hurt in? I think that was the Philadelphia one, but he still played in nearly 70% of the uh, of the snaps. To me, he's just a known commodity as a talent. And I, those always work out. You know, Kimara, you can change all mm -hmm. the pieces around him. He just works out. Yeah, and and that's another great name to bring up. I think there's uh, right now three running backs I really like. I'm going to take one that might surprise you guys. It might not because it's me, but Brees Hall has yeah, been. I think it's fair. He's been unbelievable. He's already a top ten running back in fantasy. He's a second half of the year player, a young budding superstar who is now getting the work for the two and O Zach Wilson uh, led. Yeah, you Jets. hear that, Mike? I might uh, sign him and play him against you too. Oh, oh man! Please, <laughs> just the anti-Mike team. Please. Yeah, just his enemies across. Whatever the you do, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so there's All a right. there's Brees a Hall over so over Mixon over Fournette and over Camara. Those 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 are the four names. I don't I don't mind it at all. Those are the four names to me that I I mean you can make a strong argument for absolutely any one of them. I'm not saying Brees is so clearly better than them, but I want the upside. If this was my team that I'm drafting, I want. I want what Jonathan Taylor did at the end of last year. I think you have a, a wider range of outcomes with Brees than you do those two other players, but that's fun. I mean, it's fun to have that upside that is still unseen. I mean, last week, if Michael Carter was hurt, he scores two more times. Yeah, yeah. He's the number one on the week. Mike, you're back on the clock. I will take... <sighs> this has been very fun, by the way. Yeah, so this this uh the two running backs I had talked about, it wasn't Dalvin Cook, but it was... Do you take Josh Jacobs, who's actually looks fantastic, is producing, or do you take the volume of Joe Mixon and hope that they figure it out? Because Joe Mixon has all, he should have the most fantasy points. All, in, yes, in football, all the work is there, but dreadful, dreadful on the ground. Uh, and oh, but I would take the opportunities. I would take Joe Mixon, and I don't like it. Uh, well, we'll go back to back with opportunities not equaling production. I'm going to take Jamar Chase right after Joe Mixon. It will come for Jamar Chase. Fantasy world, take heart. It will. He has run more routes than anybody in football. Um, they're going to get some things figured out with this average depth of target. I think that will apply to both Mixon and Chase. It's not been a fun ride, but it's going to get better. Those talents are too good to be held down for very long. Chase is going to need to score, um, but those days are coming. Uh, Jason, you are on the clock with pick 19. The next best wide receiver is still Devontae Adams, and while he has uh, had some big games, he's had some quiet games, there's looming suspension, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take running backs until I feel like the elite are gone. To me, there are two left, which is Fournette and Kamara. Uh, he has not performed where you want him to so far, but if I was on the clock drafting – I still believe Kamara is a top running back rest of season. That's who I would draft. All right. Well, cool. uh, so I'll take the dump truck. <laughs> you're taking the dump truck. Yeah, the, thank you. That is Leonard Fournette. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are rounding into form. It was a slower start, but and it, Rashad White is – the reason that Leonard Fournette, Fournette to me fell to this point is Rashad White is starting to get a little bit more involved, but – this team is getting better. They're going to score a bunch of touchdowns. So this is this is very difficult to because I know that we only have four picks left, and the player that I'm having a hard time with, and I'll just be transparent, 
because these aren't real rosters that yeah, we're starting we're, anywhere. We're, we're all having a conversation. I don't know where to slot two players. I don't know what to think about Damian Pierce the rest of the season. I don't think he belongs here ahead of Alvin Kamara. But the player that might belong ahead of Alvin Kamara based on his return is DeAndre Swift. We've already yeah, seen the hmm, we've yes. seen the lineup, the 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 way that Detroit can put points up on the board. DeAndre Swift on a per touch basis is so incredible um, that I think that's this is where he belongs. I yeah. think this is DeAndre Swift's spot. So I will take him, and I will hope that this injury is not more prolonged. I don't have insight, Kyle. I don't know if you do as to when the projected return of DeAndre Swift is going to be. My brain is saying ah, a couple weeks. We well, got the bye week, and they had always said that yeah. it, it's going to hold him out through the bye. So I fully expect him to be back week seven. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully. Well, in that case, I definitely feel good about Swift here, and I'm trying to keep the long view in mind. If you are not one in four and fighting to survive, then DeAndre Swift is the player that I would want to close the season at. Yeah, three picks left. You're right. It gets it gets a little bit difficult. There are going to be players left off that uh, are deserving of being drafted. I'm looking at Taysom Hill. <laughs> I'm looking. You know, look, Aaron Jones at running back is fantastic. Sure. Lamar Jackson should be drafted. He's a difference maker. But I do think at this point, with the uh, with with Swift being gone. I'm going to go to Devontae Adams at wide receiver. I don't think he should go past this spot. And I will go Lamar Jackson. The Again, the, the difference making that the quarterbacks have had, the top three, and you could and Mahomes is closing the gap. Mahomes is, is re-entering the conversation of he is in this elite group. The When, when Lamar Jackson can give you a 50-point week uh, and then when, when he's not giving you 50-point weeks, still, still good. I would like it's been it's the quarterback landscape is so difficult to comprehend how these top four guys like if you don't have them you are it's a struggle to win one player I have a question about the quarterback position I'll round the draft out before I ask it I'm gonna go with AJ Brown to finish the draft okay Uh, I just think from a like baseline standpoint upside touchdown upside this is the best team in football right now A.J. Brown belongs on your fantasy roster. I know last week was a slow one, but Byron Murphy's kind of done that too. Uh, number ones, Cooper Cup and company. So I'll go with A.J. Brown. Uh, there, Lots of other players could have been considered there. Uh, you know, you mentioned Aaron Jones. You know, Debo wasn't drafted. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are kind of the ones that stand out. I guess you could look at like Amon- C.D. Lamb, Amon Ra. Yep, mm-hmm. those two guys for sure. But the question I wanted to circle back to, because we haven't brought it up because he's not been bad. So sometimes when you have a top-drafted quarterback that doesn't bust, you know, it's not Russell's story. Like, the narrative isn't the Russell Wilson story. It's what do you do with and what do you think about Justin Herbert right now? Because sure. Herbert was a top-three quarterback last year, and he has all those same skill sets that we, you know, we know what he can do. And he's been injured. He's been playing through the rib cartilage issue, and he hasn't had Keenan Allen. Right. I, so what, what's def- your like second-half sentiment around him? My second-half sentiment is that he would be the fifth quarterback taken. I'm not going to take him ahead of the three mobile rushing quarterbacks that have been dominating. Those three are set apart. If you want to take him ahead of Mahomes because you think Mahomes has been out producing what you know he should at so many passing touchdowns versus rushing touchdowns, great. But he's right there. He's in that conversation. Quarterback four and five are Herbert and Mahomes. Uh, but they, you know, we have to project that Herbert's going to be better than what he's been in order to take him. Would there. you? So you feel confident taking Herbert over Kyler Murray, who's about to get DeAndre Hopkins back? I hope that Kyler Murray with Hopkins is what we have seen his peak be in the past. But right now, I am not fully confident in that. I am confident that Herbert is going to be better. Don't get me talking about Kyler Murray because I've got Ooh. so many thoughts about this guy that l- let me just put I'll put one thing out there into the world. Well, get okay. talking about Kyler Murray. Thank you. I knew you were <laughs> going to say that. That's why I said I'm going to put one thing out there. Okay. Kyler Murray's not the number 1 overall pick in the NFL draft. If you tell me that the Arizona Cardinals aren't going to run him. If you tell me that Kyler Murray's not a dual threat, yeah. he's just a pocket passer and the Cardinals are not going to run him on purpose. He's not the number one pick, and he's not special enough. Right? You're, you're saying NFL pick? Correct. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah, that yeah. if you if you because that's what it feels like. It feels like they got him and they said we're not going to run you, 
unless it's an emergency. We're going to break glass at the end of a loss. I was at home watching uh, the Cardinals game because it was the afternoon, only three games left. So I was able to leave the studio. I was watching it at home, and there was a play where drop back to pass and immediately ran. It was a designed, you know, like the, the, quarter, I bet it worked. the quarterback draw. The second he started moving, I just screamed, yes! I know. Like, what are you? Like, I knew the play was going to work. You want to know why I knew the play was going to work? Because it would work every single time. Yeah, and he's faster than everybody else. Yeah, and, and they. Do, and you you want to know how else I know it'll work? Because I've seen it work every time with Jalen Hurts. You want to know how else I know it works? Because I've seen it work every single time with Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen. Yeah, it's you like a superpower. You have this weapon, yeah. and you use it, like, once or twice a game or when uh, the clock is running out and you shouldn't use it, you'll call it then. Yeah. No, Cliff this is this is, is like um you've got a you've got a bazooka to to shoot it something out of the air and you're like I'm going to throw rocks. You've got the superpower built in. I'm going to load the bazooka with jelly. Yeah, this is just not a uh I'm kind of into that idea. Oh, that'd be good. A jelly bazooka? <laughs> yeah. All right. I feel like that's like a kid's snack <laughs> waiting to happen. <laughs> Open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but so Kyle, I just looked it up. Kyler Murray is Six points better per game with Hopkins. Well, he's going to be much better. And and Rondell Moore he just got back. Trey McBride, Zach Ertz. Uh, it's going to be – and the, the schedule's juicy. Yeah. That was, so are you saying you take Kyler over Herbert? I I think I would. Cause Is that because you feel like Keenan's never coming back? No. I'm very concerned about when he will come back as a, a hamstring injury. Those are terrible to come back from. A re-aggravated hamstring it's like you've seen that derail a player's entire season. And the question was, I was going to ask, it's like, have we seen Kyler Murray truly be bad when DeAndre Hopkins is on the field? No. And it's no. He's been, no. that's when he was been truly elite. I, I've made trades with Justin Herbert to try to get Kyler on the cheap plus. I've tried to make that exchange. I think before you push that button, and we get out of here. I think that the lesson to be learned from so far from draft season to now being over a month in is uh, the top quarterbacks should be drafted higher. We are so afraid. Of, well, I'm just saying they have been. You look at this. This draft, is an outlier year, though. Last year, the difference between a top three quarterback and a top 12 quarterback was like a point. It, it's it's I understand what you're saying, but the problem is getting it right. In, in years past, it's been not picking the right one. It's drafting Mahomes when it should have been Allen. It's drafting Rodgers when it should have been Lamar. It's it That's been the problem. At the very least, then, Josh Allen, sure. who was the number one quarterback yes. two years ago yes. and the number one quarterback last year and is the number one quarterback yeah. this year, should not be falling into the third round. I agree with you. And and that's smart. We should call that the Kelsey policy. I mean, really, he's, he's the one who set that precedent at tight end where you're like, eh, you do it every year. You should probably be drafted there. And yeah. Josh Allen, is, when's it going to stop? I I don't know. Twenty twenty six. Yeah. Just throwing Just out a guess. Date out. All right. Thursday night breakdown. We are uh, we have that button and they they are playing on Thursday, so I'm I'm obligated to to click it. The DraftKings sportsbook line for the Washington Commanders taking on the Chicago Bears is Washington minus one in Chicago. Uh, the over under is thirty eight points. Let's keep it short and sweet, gentlemen. The, the disrespect. I know. The one and four team going to the home of the three and two team being favored is just delightful. David Montgomery, put him in your lineup. Yep. And then close the book. Uh, Yeah. I, on the yep. Chicago Bears. Oh, okay. Yep. I Bears. mean, guys, Cole Komet did catch some passes last week. Four for 45. Okay. Um, He's Mike, would you like to play against Cole Komet or Taysom Hill? <laughs> Uh, Cole Komet. <laughs> yeah, plays. but uh, I, I thought you were going to say, would I rather play against Cole Komet or or uh, Kyle Pitts? And I don't have an answer. I, it, it's the disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick correction, guys. This makes more sense. I think Jake Riz got in the show doc. The Bears oh. are two and three, not three and two. Oh, that makes okay. That sense. makes far okay. more sense. Yeah, yeah Jake Riz it. always trying to inflate his own win totals. <laughs> um, <laughs> well said. Uh, on the other side, look. Uh, Antonio Gibson is is DED. Uh, JD McKissick is good for five to seven fantasy points every single week of his life. And then the real question mark to me is I am observing from the sideline here yes. the Brian Robinson experience yep, because smash. 
Uh, the Bears' defense against running backs, it's not been great. I think Robinson will have more opportunity. I think there's going to be a natural increase in that opportunity, and this is the kind of game that stays close enough, right? They're not getting blown out of the water by Justin Fields and company. So I am watching from the sideline and, and asking myself the question, do I have a flex-worthy Brian Robinson at some point this year? TBD. Yeah, that's the question that should be asked and watched from the sideline. Like you said, I uh, think Curtis Samuel is a player that can absolutely be played. He's leading this team in targets. I'd play uh, him over Terry McLaurin. I yeah. would as well. 11 that's targets, 9 targets, 10 targets, 7 targets, 8 targets. He is involved. Uh, he's also had, what, 8 rushing attempts on the season in a good matchup here without Jahan Dotson. Curtis Samuel is a very safe player. Let me, let me ask a few quick questions. Oh, for gosh. So, Terry McLaurin against Chicago or uh, Adam Thielen against the Dolphins? Adam Thielen, the matchup is great against Terry the Dolphins. Terry McLaurin or Jacoby Myers against the Cleveland Browns? Jacoby Myers. Yep. I'm not jamming Terry McLaurin into my lineup anymore. Okay, let me try and go a Aren't little bit. Aren't targets and earn stat? That's, that's what we say. Cause it, it, the, he, yes. His target share. His lack of involvement last week. I mean, he's a good player. It's just 12, 10, 13, 2, 10. Uh, let's see. And then, uh, okay, then a, a wild one. Terry McLaurin or on the other side of the field, Darnell Mooney. Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin. Uh, would you trade Terry McLaurin to get Curtis Samuel straight up? Oh, man, that's tough. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think so I don't because like that question. I, I don't think so because nor would I trade him necessarily straight up to get um, Jacoby Myers, who I think is the same type, the same archetype of, of Curtis Samuel. Very consistent. You're going to get, you know, nine, ten points out of that player more often than you get out of Terry McLaurin. But I don't think they're going to win you weeks. I still am hoping that Terry McLaurin, which we've seen from him before, uh, can he be has, a more dominant, you know, big output type he, of player he has hit 75 yards in three or five games yeah it it's just very difficult He's to know scoring though like when you roll the the six-sided dice and or die and you have to land on one to get your Carson Wentz game and the other ones all stink I mean I, I listened to the Ron Rivera conversation that is not an endorsement of Carson Wentz no that is a very transparent very open it's his fault type of conversation. Uh, a reminder, check your waiver wire for who was dropped today. Got to drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. And we will be live on Spotify, the party room, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern today. So grab the Spotify app. Grab the Spotify live app. Tune in. It'll be a great time. See you there, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.